Hi everyone, it's Sailor from TutorialEdge.net and in this tutorial, we're going to be taking a more in-depth look at ImmuDB, the immutable database technology, and how we can use it to build tamper-proof systems. Now, sometimes we need to build systems that are up to scratch for the likes of James Bond, and ultimately they need to be tamper-proof. We need to guarantee that sophisticated super hackers aren't modifying the information within our systems and stealing fortunes to fund their notorious plans. In this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how you can achieve tamper-proof backing storage using MUDB for an arguably less cool system which deals with payroll data. We'll be building two systems to be exact, one which is going to be responsible for updating payroll data and the other which consumes this data to then pay out to the engineers. Now the key part of this is that each system will have a means of validating the data hasn't been tampered with whilst it's been at rest. Now, we basically need to ensure this so that some crafty programmer hasn't gone in and updated their salary to double that of everyone else's. Cool, so let's dive into Visual Studio Code and let's start creating these two distinct applications that are going to be talking to our payroll database. Now, the first thing that we're going to want to do is to run a new instance of MUDB on our local machine. And we can do that using Docker. So I'm gonna use the Docker run command going to make it interactive, run in detached mode, dash p to bind the port 3322 to port 3322, and also bind 9497 to 9497. Next, I'm going to give it the name MUDB payroll, and the image I want to run is code notary slash MUDB colon latest. Now, when you've run that, you should have a instance of Code Notary's MUDB running and ready to play with. Cool. Cool. So we're going to be effectively creating two distinct applications and we're going to be doing it under the same directory because I'm a little bit lazy, let's be honest. Now, I'm going to split these two applications into a client and a server. And the server is going to be the one that handles updating uh, an engineer's payroll information within the database and the client is going to be responsible for retrieving it and verifying that it hasn't been tampered with. Next, I've got the internal slash MUDB package, which features a couple of function signatures that we're going to be fleshing out, as well as a database struct and an engineer struct that we're going to be using to store the ID and the salary of an engineer within the database. Cool, so the first thing we want to do is to implement the new MUDB function so that both our client and our server can quickly connect to our database and start to send queries to that database. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do is to create a new client or a new MUDB client. And I'm gonna use the MUD client alias package and new MU client. Then I'm gonna pass in MU client dot default options just to create a default client. If there's been an error with this, so if error does not equal nil, then we want to do log dot print error dot error and return an empty DB struct and the error like so. Cool. So saving that. Next we want to create context from the background. So context dot background. And we want to use this context to log in. So LR error is equal to the client that we've just instantiated dot login. And this will take in that context. And then it takes in a byte slice containing MUDB for the username and another byte slice containing MUDB for the password. Now, if there's been an error logging in, once again, we want to check if error does not equal nil, log.print error dot error. And again, return an empty database and the error. Otherwise, we want to do the following. So we want to do MD is equal to metadata.pairs. And this is going to be an authorization pair with the LR, the login token. And then below this, we want to use context equals metadata and new outgoing context and this will take in context.background 
and the metadata pair that we've just created there. Go. Now that we've done all this, we can return the database with the context. And we'll put this on a new line just for clarity. And this would map to the context that we've created on line 37 here. And we also want to map the client to the client that we've created just at the start of this function here. Cool. We also want to do comma nil uh, to say that we were returning no error. Cool. So both our applications will now have a very handy function that we can use to quickly get access to our MUDB database. Now, the next thing we want to do is to go into the server and we want to update our main function to use this. So we want to say database or error is equal to mudb dot new mudb and that'll automatically import the path to internal mudb package that we've got there. And then we want to say if error does not equal nil, then um, log dot fatal could not connect to MUDB. Perfect. Next, underneath this, we want to do the updates to the engineer salary. So we want to basically say db.update salary. And what is the signature for this again? So update salary is using the database that we created. Update salary it takes in an ID for the engineer that we are going to update and the new salary and it returns an error. So error equals db update salary. And the ID of the engineer is going to be, let's say one, two, three, four, five. And the salary we want to give this engineer is 100K, which is quite a hefty salary. Cool. If there has been an error updating this person's salary, then we want to do if error does not equal nil. Log.fatal could not update engineer's salary. Perfect. So we're calling this function, but we haven't yet implemented it. So let's set about trying to implement that now within our MUDB package here. Cool. So this is a critical part of the system. And we need to be able to verify that this hasn't been tampered with in any way when we are updating this. So no pesky programmer or hacker can come into the system and somehow modify this. So the way we can do that is we can use the verified set method, which returns the proofs needed to mathematically verify that the data has not been tampered with. So I'm going to do two things here. So I'm going to create a new engineer which will be a struct of type engineer. I'm going to set the ID of this engineer equal to the ID and the salary equal to the salary, like so. Next, we want to do a verified set. So I'm going to say PTX or error is equal to client dot or DB dot client, I should say, dot verified set, taking in the DB dot context. We're going to do the byte slice, which will contain the ID of the engineer. And we're going to do json.marshal. And we're going to marshal this engineer into a byte slice for the value. Now, json.marshal should return a byte slice or an error. So what we actually need to do here is move this up one and do json engineer or error is equal to json.marshal. If error does not equal nil, um, return error. Otherwise, we're going to put the json engineer byte slice here, like so. Next, we need to verify that there's been no error when we've tried to do the verified set. So I'm going to do if error does not equal nil, then return this error. And then finally, we're just going to log dot print if that we've successfully committed and verified the engineer's salary salary update and we're going to do 
percentage V and then PTX like so. Open a new line. Perfect. And finally, there's no error at this point, so return now. And that should be us. Cool. So let's go into the terminal and we're going to do go run cmd server slash main.go to try and run this new application. And this should run through, create a new database instance or create a connection to the database and then attempt to update the salary with the ID of the engineer as 12345 to 100,000. And we've missed one wee thing. So MUDB. Line 65, let's just return zero and null for now so they can run our application. Run this once again. And you can see that it has been able to successfully commit and verify the engineer salary update with ID two, as I've already run this, and then it prints out the verification object. Awesome. So. We've been able to effectively create an application that's been able to write to the database and mathematically verify that nothing has been tampered with when writing to this database. Now, the next thing we need to do is to create the downstream client for our payroll system that's going to effectively give our engineer information about their salary based on their ID. And we need this to also be tamper proof so that you know, we've guaranteed that whilst it was within the database, nothing has changed. No pesky engineers have gone in there and modified a few digits. Cool. So let's open up the client. And we're going to do pretty much the same that we did with the server. We're going to do database or error is equal to mudb.newdb. If there's been an error, then um, we'll do log.fatal the error. Otherwise, let's do error or salary, I should say, and error is equal to db dot get verified salary. And the ID is going to be one, two, three, four, five. So if there's been an error, then log dot fatal the error. Otherwise, log dot print f salary information percentage d slash n salary like so cool so let's set about implementing this get verified salary function now we'll open up mudb.go let's remove this to do and let's do the following so v entry or error is equal to db.client dot verified get which is pretty much the opposite of the verified set it's going to take in the database.context, a byte slice with the ID of the engineer that we want to retrieve. And then we want to say if error does not equal nil log dot fatal the error. And let's fix this typo. Save that. So the next challenge is within the entry, we've stored our engineer as a JSON object so that we can store things like the ID and the salary. We now need to unmarshal this um, this entry into an engineer again so that we can then return that engineer's salary. So let's do var eng, which will be of type engineer. And then we want to do if error is equal to JSON dot unmarshal v entry dot value. Um, error does not equal nil, return zero on the error. And we also want to pass in eng as the second argument. If this is all going to plan, then we want to do eng.salary and nil like so. Perfect. So once again, let's open up the client and let's try and run this client now that we've run the server and we're going to do go run cmd client main.go and that's going to go away connect to the database and fetch the salary information for our engineer with the id 12345 now by using the verified get and set method we've effectively been able to validate 
that not only has the producer of the payroll information been able to um, ensure that nothing's been tampered with, but the consumer's also been able to validate that when retrieving that information from the database, it also hasn't been tampered with at rest. Now, this is one of the huge selling points for MUDB as it means that you've got that level of consistency that's backed by mathematical proofs. And you don't, you don't tend to have that sort of guarantee when you're working with something like MySQL or Postgres. You would have to implement something around that yourself, which is more often than not, not really feasible. So having this inbuilt within the um, database layer your, itself makes your life a whole lot simpler. Cool. So that's all we're going to cover in this tutorial. In this tutorial, we've been able to create two distinct uh, instances or applications that have been able to verify both the retrieval and the setting of uh, a value within the database. Now, just want to say at this point, thanks to Code Notary for sponsoring this video. And if you enjoyed this video, then please leave a like and let me know in the comment section down below if you've got any feedback. As always, have a good one. Cheers.